Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Insights with Dylan White. I'm super excited to bring you guys a quick series on the Microsoft Security 101 and walk you guys through each module. And in today's lesson, we're gonna learn about the basic security concepts. So super excited, stay tuned, let's go. All right guys, let's get into the very first basic concept every person getting cybersecurity needs to know, and that is a CIA triad. And what the CIA triad stands for, the C being confidentiality, the I being integrity, the A being availability. So quickly, what is confidentiality? Confidentiality is the classification of data, right? So how each data is not uh, created the same, but it's also not protected the same, right? So a street address for somebody is very important, right? But if it's a street address on business, it's a different classification. Um, and so you have what's called personally identifiable information, which is protected at a much different rate than business information. That's one example. Integrity of that information, right? At the end of the day, with data, it's only as good as if, you know, the data is truth in, in essence, right? So if you can manipulate that data or a system to manipulate the data and then ch therefore change the integrity of it, it's therefore no longer secure, right? So a quick example is a driver's license, right? So somebody can hack into a driver's license system and change their date or change their um, driver's license ID, whatever they can do, right? Um, and therefore that there's no longer has any integrity. Um, and then availability, right? We're all very familiar, I think, with DDoS attacks, uh, which is a distributed denial of service attack, in which somebody take purposely takes a system offline by attacking it repeatedly, um, and therefore making it unavailable. And so I think if you don't know any of these three topics when you're entering into cybersecurity, you gotta go back to the fundamentals, right? And make sure you understand the very basics, otherwise it's just gonna be a very much an uphill battle. So everything just build, keep buildings off of these and off of these concepts. So again, CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And let's get into the next module. See you guys soon. All right, guys, let's jump into module two. This module is all about common cybersecurity threats and classifying them into different categories and understanding where they come from and why attackers might do them. So in this section, you'll understand what is a cybersecurity threat why do malicious actors do what they do? Um, what are the most common types of threats? And um, what is the MITRE attack framework? And how to keep up to date with cybersecurity landscape? So I'm just gonna drop a couple key concepts. And once again, please just go back to the module, um, listen to Sarah, and she'll walk you through it. But it's it's really good, really important basics. And again, this course in itself should only take 60 minutes. It should come out the other side really well. So what is a cybersecurity threat, right? It's just refers to any potential danger or risk that has potential to compromise the CIA, right, of data or systems. Very simple, right? If anything can compromise the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of systems, it's a cybersecurity threat. So why do malicious attackers want to compromise data and IT systems? It's, it's very rampant out there, right? First one's money. It's a business now. At the end of the day, this new venture that people have found over the last decade or so, probably the most lucrative business model that there is today, right? For any type of attackers, bad actors, um, you wanna call them, you know, thieves, whatever you wanna call them, it's lucrative. Um, so that's why it's hard to stop, right? End of the day, just like being police on the street, you gotta start protecting your network just like that. Um, but simple, right? Financial gain will always be number one. Espionage, right? There's nation state actors, right? That will go after large industry, right? So think of um, SolarWinds hack that happened um, in 2020, was created by Russia. Um, espionage, right? Number one reason outside of financial gain is for espionage. They go after critical supply chain because they know that certain government agencies use these systems, certain cities use these systems. It's rampant, right? TeamViewer was just a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately for them, it looks like they weren't actually attacked from a corp outside of their corporate network. They had really good segmentation that's documented. So we'll definitely stay up to date with that one and we'll show you how to stay up to date with these. But it's so important to understand where you're getting your supply chain from, right? And so going through those, ideological is another one. We've seen a lot where people in these different industries will attack certain things that they don't believe in, right? It just happens. Um, you know, what type of threats happen? Phishing, so the number one attack vectors through a fish ransomware starts with a fish right all these attacks which you'll learn is that they can feed off each other right so a virus can start with just a fish right 
just like a ransomware can start with a phishing, right? DDoS is probably one of the separate ones that doesn't necessarily start with a fish, right? Um, so it just happens, right? Talked a little bit about just a second ago what DDoS was in the first module. But now we're building off of it, right? I told you, cybersecurity, we're building each layer. So I tell a lot of people, when you start out in cybersecurity, usually you're coming from somewhere else. It's very hard to start cybersecurity, net zero in technology. It's very difficult. Um, so I'll let you guys read through these. Credential attacks happening more and more often. I tell everybody with the new identity being your edge plane to get into corporate networks, credential attacks are happening more and more and more, right? So that's where you hear about password spray attacks. That's where you hear about attacker in the middle attacks taking over a token, right? Credential theft happens so much more now because email is not that vector again, right? So what is MITRE, right? So MITRE attack framework, it's all about the adversary tactics, techniques, and common knowledge landscape, right? So it's how attackers get into your network and it's built into a framework to understand the different methodologies, whether it's at the entry phase, all kinds of different phases. I can do a whole video on MITRE if you drop a comment down below in the video, we can, we can get into it. Um, and so where can you stay up to date? OWASP, one of the very best resources, right? They're top 10, incredible. Um, the CVEs, right? It's always important to see what other CVEs are out there. Every industry, every partner, every vendor always updates their CVEs um, as soon as they're out. And this is really good. CISA, if you're a small organization or you're an IT director, or IT manager, help desk person in a small business, and you don't have access to a lot of cybersecurity resources, CISA has free resources out there for you to get a free cybersecurity assessment. It's incredible. Um, I'll drop all the links in, in actual notes. And then, of course, National Cybersecurity of Excellence, US CERT, all kinds. Um, US CERT's really good. I actually have a couple of friends that used to work for them. Amazing organization as well. So that's a little bit about the common cybersecurity threats and the actors, the different fish, the different um, actual um, attack vectors, and a little bit about how you can skip the date. And so to module three we go all right guys module three let's get into it. it's one of my favorite ones because it's, it's a tough one right every business and every industry treats this module differently and it's understanding risk management and risk mitigation um so we're going to go through the definitions of commonly used security technology types of security controls and assessing security risks let's go so i want to give you guys a quick story on why it's such a variable out there um, the quick story is this, right? Imagine you work for one of the largest manufacturing organizations in the world. Uh, it's 2017 and ransomware just hits, right? Ransomware goes after all kinds of different supply chain attacks and it's rampant. You as a cybersecurity engineer are told, hey, how much would it cost to take my plant devices off the network and update them so they're no longer at risk, right? What happened is there was a control that could not be done on the outdated system, right? And all these plants have these outdated systems, so therefore they were at risk of being taken offline rampantly. Um, as a security engineer, you're told, okay, well, it takes up roughly 45 minutes per machine. Each plant has 10 machines, so roughly to do it, it would take the plant down for three hours. Um, and what you would find, right, because you can only do two at a time. So what you would find is that plant says three hours, each hour that we're down, we lose a million dollars. So to the business, it says, can we do this, right? That's across almost 750 plants, one country alone. So you're saying 750 times three hours or $3 million, not going to happen, right? So maybe what they did to risk mitigate was take one plant offline in one month of the year, right? So all of a sudden, it's taking them seven years to catch up. And then there's another one they got to patch. right? It's not going to happen. So they got to figure out a patch management system and try to mitigate solutions. So that's why it's critical to understand the business risk and weigh it against the proponents right so you have to weigh everything as a business um it's it's crazy you actually start sitting in on the conversations where somebody entering that world you're like wow they even think about this way interesting so common security technology a threat agent is either an individual group or an organization right or automated system that has the potential to exploit systems simple right threat agent where are you a threat is a potential event or action that can exploit vulnerabilities. A vulnerability, weakness, or flaw in a system design. We just talked about the patching. System was outdated, need to be patched, right? Risk, what's the potential loss for harm or damage? Simple. An asset, anything of value? Simple. 
Yeah, it could be a credential, it could be a person, right? Social engineer. Um, think of a CFO, very much an asset and a very much a vulnerable person. Exposure, right? In a state of being vulnerable with potential threats. Courage when vulnerability exists, but exploited to a threat agent. Control is a measure put in place to reduce the risk associated with vulnerabilities and threats. So control in that situation I told you about before the plant, control would be a patch management system that can help automate patches during scheduled downtime. So here's a good old diagram of what how it works and what happens, right? So you have threats that become attacks, right? Through exploit of vulnerabilities, which are exposed as risks. You need a countermeasure to protect the assets compromised by threats. Very good diagram. This is one I would document, right? Types of security controls, administrative, very basic, but are you using role-based access controls to administer your systems? If you're not, go do it. Technical controls, are you using things like access control, or using things like encryption and firewalls, intrusion detection, anti-malware, authentication mechanism, MFA, conditional access, I'm using those things. Once again, there's a section on the first page of this that I, I navigate to in the Microsoft Security Partner School Academy that talks all about the security hygiene and how 98% of attacks could be mitigated by just having this starting with the security hygiene. Go read it. It's not that hard, guys. You have to just dedicate time, resources, go do it, do it. Physical controls, right? Security guards, that surveillance locks, physical barriers, environmental controls. Can you tell if somebody's entering your systems? Operational controls, change management, backup, discovery, logging, auditing, secure coding practices, depth, depth sec ops is huge, right? Legal and regulatory controls, data protection regulations, right? PII, we all have that now because of ransomware, right? Your data is super secure, it should be. It's your data. Industry specific standards, right? PCI DSS for credit card payment systems, hugely important. All kinds of different banking regulations. They have to keep your system secure, right? or the SEC will make sure they do. How to assess security risks, right? Identify assets and threats, right? Can you ver Can you, as an organization, identify what your assets are and what potential threats are to your organization and to your assets, right? And then, can you assess vulnerabilities? Is there a likelihood assessment that's been done, right? Am I likely to get attacked or likely to have been attacked? Um, impact assessment. What is my impact, right? If I am breached, what is my impact on that, right? What's the impact of Dylan White, right? What's a breach in, and we simulate it, right? What's the risk calculation, right? Prioritizing, prioritization and decision-making. Think of it, you're ransom, like completely locked out of your entire business and every single second you're losing money. How do you, right, prioritize your decision-making? Right, what's the most important things for you to bring up on, online? If you're in manufacturing, is it bringing up the manufacturing floor so you can start producing even if you can't ship yet? Right, is it just to get production back up? Right, and maybe you just manually know, hey, I have these 10 orders, at least I'm going to get 10 orders processed even while we're bringing systems up. Um, risk treatment, right? Transferring risk through insurance, right? Can you accept certain risks? Important. Um, continuous monitoring and review, right? Can you continuously monitor? If you cannot, right? In today's day and world, if you run a business and you do not have an internal SOC, you should have an external SOC. No business, you only have three team members, can afford to have those three team members being your only three 24-7. You need to go get a SOC, even if it's just after hours. Do it. All right? And so that's a little bit about understanding risk management and monitoring. All right? So that's module one and three. Let's hop into one four, security practices and documenting. All right? Let's get it. All right, guys, let's dive into module four. And in this module, we're going to cover what is a security policy, what is a security standard, what is a security baseline, a guideline, and a procedure, right? And what are some of the laws and regulations when it comes to the context of cybersecurity, all right? So often, these terms are used and misunderstood, and people just don't understand the complications and how everything interconnects, right? Interconnect is a nice little... Throw back to networking for anybody that knows networking fundamentals. What is interconnect? Drop that down below. Um, but what's a security policy? All right, security policy is a, a very high level document that outlines our state organization's overarching security goals and guidelines, right? So what are security goals, guidelines, and a certain 
aspect, right? So you can have a security policy for acceptable use, right? Nowadays, a lot of different organizations, right? Even my own has an acceptable use policy of social media, right? You can't just go out acting all crazy and, you know, doing stupid stuff on Twitter and social media and not thinking there's any ramifications, right? We see that almost every day somebody lose their job because of something they did on social media it's because of an acceptable use policy, right? And what's a security standard, right? The standard is a more detailed and specific document provides guidelines and requirements for implementing security controls and measures within an organization, right? So you have a standard for security than MFA, right? Multi-factor multi authentication. Our security standard is that we will apply multi-factor authentication controls, standard, right? What's the security baseline? Security baseline is a minimum security configuration that is considered for a particular system, right? So we could have a security baseline for email security, for email use. And we have a security baseline for our device, right? What is the security baseline for a mobile device? What is your security baseline for your device yourself, right? Do you have a Windows policy, et cetera, right? What's the security procedure? You have step-by-step -step processes right, for specific actions and tasks that may be performed, right? So I have a security procedure if a Windows device is compromised or has malware. I have a procedure to outline step-by-step -step what to do for that device, right? What are laws and regulations, right? Simple, we're gonna review them, all kinds of different ones, but they're legal frameworks established by government. Simple, right? Also regulatory bodies, so you have SEC, but you also have things like the HIPAA, right? Which is, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or you have GDPR, right? For those of us that have ever worked with foreign countries, right? Like especially in European countries, or in California, right? Everyone's familiar with GDPR. Huge, huge in the industry, right? If you want to read anything further, SANS Institute, for those that have never used SANS Institute resources, maybe you're at a very small organization again, right? You're an IT manager, IT help desk person. Go look up SANS. They have all kinds of awesome policies. Right, that are just sample templates that you can then use in your organization. Just relabel, reuse, change a few things, get get the board to approve it. Good to go. Right. Then you also have the NIST and right, what are privacy laws? So, on to the next module, guys. Thanks for sticking along. All right, guys. This might be my favorite module in all of Lesson One. Um, I think it is the most hated, most debunked, most misunderstood framework has been introduced into cybersecurity easily in the last decade. It drives security practitioners, it drives security users, it drives everybody insane when they hear it. It triggers everybody. I love it, right? So I'm a huge advocate for at least understanding what this next module is, right? Understanding what zero trust is. And I'm a huge advocate to understand how different technologies have now spun, right? Just because of the zero trust frame, incredible. Um, so in this lesson we'll, we'll lesson, we'll cover what is zero trust, we'll cover how does it differ from traditional security architectures, and what is defense in depth. So zero trust is a cybersecurity approach that challenges the traditional notion of trust but verify, right? Assuming that you have no entity, whether inside or outside an organization network, should be inherently trusted. Instead, zero trust advocates for verifying every user every device and application attempting to access resources regardless of their location. To me, it is the ultimate COVID nullifier, right? Like we're treating every device as if they're at Starbucks and they are a BYOD device. I don't care what it is. That is the definition of me of zero trust. I want you to treat everything like it's not trusted at all, uh, right? And the framework itself, right, is an approach, right, at the end of the day, right? It's a model and it follows these principles, right? Verify identity, 100%. You should verify the authentication authorization rigorously apply to all users and devices regardless of their location, right? It can be anything. Identity is now the microplane for security, and we need to have that under a microscope at all times, right? Least privilege. Users and devices are granted the minimum level of access necessary for their position and role at all times, right? Make sure they're escalating to get the escalated permissions, right? Uh, micro segmentation, right? Networking gurus talk about this all the time. To me, foreign language, I understand the basic concepts, but micro segmentation is crucial to limit the lateral movement, right? So I understand the basics and moving from one network to the other, but when it actually comes to the technical side, I got some deep diving to do. Um, continuous monitoring, right? Ongoing monitoring and analysis of user and device behavior. We have a whole new subset of tools for user entity behavior analytics, 
because of zero trust and continuous monitoring. Incredible. Data encryption. Encrypt everything. In transit and at risk. Encrypt it all. Strict access control. We've always talked about role-based access control. Strict putting it in front of it. We shouldn't have had to do that, but we did because it's security, right? Access control should be enforced based on context, such as user roles, the device health, right? So even though I might have a global admin, but maybe I'm coming on my phone. Did my phone need it? Should I have global admin on my phone? Or should it be a trusted device, right? All these things come in incredible. Um, how does it differ, right? Parameter versus identity centric, right? Traditional models focus on perimeter. We had a whole firewall dedicated at the edge of perimeter. Right? Now in zero trust, it's less of a requirement, right? Implicit versus explicit. We implicitly said, hey, you're on our network, we're gonna trust you. Now it's explicit, right? Super important. Flat, you had one network for everybody, right? It's super flat, you can get from anything, right? You get from a file share, hop all the way to the domain controller if you had the right permissions, crazy. Right now it's segmented. Right, you can only get to certain things. Uh, reactive versus proactive. Right, basically once we trusted you, we were reacting to anything on that network. Right? Proactive means we can see things in advance. Right, defense in depth. Right, layered security, pieces of the onion, however you want to cut it. Um, comp it combines technical procedure and physical security measures. Right, just adding to that onion. Right, we're making the onion nice and thick. Right? Um, we love it. Right? So you got all these threats. Right, and losses and defenses. Gotta put them through, right? Now you can see what is zero trust, evolving zero trust, right? Zero trust and beyond core, right? All kinds of different things. And one thing I love about this resource from Microsoft is they don't just put Microsoft resources, right? They're putting all kinds of different tools um, at your disposal to go read. Go read it, right? So let's get it. On to the next one. All right, guys. It's the last module of module one, the security basics for the Microsoft Security 101. Also, another very important module to understand is we've innovated across the last decade and a half. We've had to come up with different tool sets and frameworks, right? So now we have this shared responsibility model of security, right? So what does that mean? It's how we share responsibility from a cloud solution provider, right? So Azure, GCP, Oracle, all the different cloud providers and their SaaS platforms, right? how they share responsibility down to the organization, the end users, et cetera. Right? So if you're looking at this over the last decade and a half or so, organizations have really been trying to shift the responsibility to the left, right? So you have companies that were innately born on premises, right? Responsible for everything. You look at that chart on the right, right? On premises, you're responsible for everything from information and data all the way down to the physical host hosting that data, right? So the servers, all the way responsible for it, right? Infrastructure as a service, right? So if you think about data centers, right? Customer, you're still responsible for information data all the way down to the operating system, right? All you're throwing is the data center. Hey, spin me up another server, right? Throwing the data in there, right? Platform as a service, though, once again, right? Now you're responsible for information and data all the way down to the network control, right? You need to make sure that your network is still your network, right? And the day that you're responsible for that. Transitioning over, right? Traditionally, moving over to the left again, platform as a service. Right, responsible for information all the way down to just applications. Right now, you just hey, I need remote desktop services on that. Right, I need um, give me account services. Right, give me account payable. Give me um, I want some type of GIS service, whatever it may be. Right, Epic, another great platform as a service. Right, you're not responsible for anything other than the application and up. Right, give it the identity, feed it, all that good stuff. Great SaaS. Right. Now you're just saying I'm responsible only for identity and up, right? I'm responsible to give that SaaS platform an identity, feeding it the accounts, feeding it devices to give access to, and information and data. Right? So you're traditionally, right, it was all responsible for everything. Now some organizations are shifting that responsibility left because they don't want to bear the brunt of that responsibility. That is the shared responsibility in a nutshell. Hopefully you understand it. Hopefully module one give you as much of understanding cybersecurity is it gave me just a little bit of greatness back. One thing I truly love is just giving you a talk to you guys about Zero Trust. Hopefully you guys saw how excited I was about that one. Um, a little bit about the CIA triad, right? Understanding confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The very basics of cybersecurity. Awesome talk through. Next one, we're going to do a quick module quiz in, and then we're going to wrap up the module. So thank you guys for sticking with me. Hey, guys. We just finished the quiz up for module one. 
the Microsoft Security 101. Some of the questions are not going to lie, got me. You thought I was going to share the results with you. You're out of your mind. You got to go take it yourself. I got 10 out of 10, but definitely had to hesitate. Thought I'd be able to just quick right through. A couple of them almost threw me. Drop what you guys got there. I'm really excited to go into module two with you guys tomorrow, all about my favorite tool, which is identity. So let's get it. See you guys tomorrow. Hope you guys had a great day, one.